So you'd have to be living under a rock to not know about all the crap that Volkswagen has been dealing with over the past year with their dieselgate emission scandal. But what about the company's gas-powered model? Well, today I'm driving the best one they have to offer. Let's take an in-depth look at the 2016 Volkswagen Golf R. Now, if you're an enthusiast, the Golf name is something that you are quite familiar with. This is essentially the original hot hatch that came to the States way back in, I believe, 1983. Now, if you guys look at the Golf and how it's evolved over the years, this particular one that I'm showing you is the seventh generation. It's known as the Mark 7. And the Golf R always has been the pinnacle of the Golf lineup. Uh, this is, sits above the GTI, and it's always been the Golf that, has, that comes with all-wheel drive uh, and with the most powerful engine. Now, this current generation, Golf R was introduced in 2015 uh, and it's been a critically successful vehicle. The Golf in general has been a very uh, big hit for Volkswagen. Now you can see with this current generation the styling is very evolutionary compared to the Mark 6. The R pumps up everything uh, from even the standard GTI uh, trim level. You can see at the front uh, these LED daytime running lights with by Xenon swiveling adaptive headlights are standard. Uh, even the turn signals are LED. The front end is kind of or has its own unique grille, its own unique bumper. There's a nice subtle R logo logo in the grille. And then when you come around the side of the vehicle, the Golf the Golf R is surprisingly one of the smaller entries in the class. The overall length of the thing is like 168 inches, which is uh, about six to eight inches shorter uh, than the current generation Focus RS, this car's newest competitors. Now my tester is riding on 18-inch wheels. They're very handsome, attractive, machine spoke five spoke machine finished five spoke wheels they fill out the wheel wells nicely out back um, quad exhaust signify that this is the golf R model along with a little subtle uh, rear spoiler and these um, updated uh, tail lights now overall the proportions of the golf R are still very handsome to me I'm very pleased with the design of this car it's a little bit too restrained at the same time if you look at this car's main competitors the Subaru STI the Ford Focus RS they have much more assertive styling so if you're looking for a performance car that it doesn't scream look at me uh, the Golf R is definitely uh, something that you're gonna be looking at um, I also think the design of this car is elegantly handsome I feel that it may age better than some of its competitors but again looks are all subjective uh, under the hood of course you have the company's most potent 2 liter turbocharged motor pumps out 292 horsepower going through a hall ducts all-wheel drive system and my tester has the six-speed manual transmission but uh, enough about the exterior let's take a look at the inside and see some of the changes that Volkswagen has done for the R versus the regular GTI and Golf models. So since the Golf is at the pinnacle of the lineup, um, it does come standard with Volkswagen's smart key access system uh, with push button start. Here is the newer Volkswagen key. You can see it's still a flip, uh, flip key design, even though you don't technically need to use the key, but all you have to do is keep the key in your pocket or your person. Uh, to lock the door, you just rest your finger on this little indentation on the door handle. It beeps. Uh, to unlock it, just touch the back of the door handle and that unlocks the car for you. Now, looking at the interior of the latest Golf R, you can see it's a very handsome, restrained cabin. Uh, the seats are definitely more aggressively bolstered. You have contrasting uh, stitching along with some nice R logos in the seats. They hold you in place nicely, and they're not super aggressive like what you get on the Focus RS, so I'm really pretty much in love with the seats. This is already a winner for me. Uh, the rest of the interior layout, it's the standard Golf stuff. It could pretty much wear an Audi badge uh, on the steering wheel. It's a very, very nice interior. Now, stepping inside, the Golf R. It has a really easy step in height, of course, and you know, you feel like you're sitting low, but not quite as low as the Focus RS that I just reviewed, reviewed for you guys. And again, the seats, super comfortable, supportive. The steering wheel is nice to look at. Shutting the door, it sounds super solid. I mean, it just gives you that level of quality that you get with a German car. Uh, now, like I said, push button start uh, is standard on the Golf R. Uh, here is the button down here. All you have to do is start it. My tester has the lovely six-speed manual. Uh, put the clutch in and then push the button here to fire it up. And then the gauges do a nice sweep and you can see uh, the Golf R gives you these blue specific needles and a 200 mile per hour speedo. 
engine sounds pretty nice. It's a very subdued, muted growl. Nothing obnoxious like what you get on the Subaru or the Ford competitor. Now, uh, looking at the interior at a glance, you can see um, upgraded materials versus the standard Golf. Uh, you have this carbon fiber look, plastic trim. The door or the dashboard materials are all soft touch. It's a very high quality graining. Uh, down here, it is hard touch plastic, but everything in here pretty much fits very nicely. I like the piano black trim. It just accents the cabin very nicely. Uh, the door panels here, soft touch as well with more of that carbon fiber look plastic. Um, there's an aluminum door handle here and then um, some more leather stitching where your elbows are gonna rest. The window is one touch automatic for the driver, for the front passenger, and for the rear. So it's one touch for all four, just like the Focus RS. So it's good that Volkswagen included that. The steering wheel has you know a nice flat bottom, uh, traditional R logos, Really nice contrasting stitching. It feels really good in your hands. The wheel itself is kind of a large diameter. Uh, it's an electric power steering assist. It feels really good. We'll go into that the test drive later on. Now, coming over here to the infotainment system, this is a new infotainment system for 2016. It does include uh, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, so I'm really happy to see Volkswagen completely upgrading it. Uh, this is a seven inch screen, a little bit on the small side, um, but a lot of its competitors are also the same way. Um, when you put the vehicle into reverse, you do get a backup camera that pops out. Um, it does have trajectory, I'm sorry, it doesn't have trajectory, um, but you can get parking sensors if you guys go for upper trim. My, my tester is a pretty standard uh, Golf R. Uh, it's pretty much the cheapest one you can buy. Um, going to the sources here, of course, you have your traditional media sources, AM, FM, satellite radio. When you go to the, the Apple CarPlay, you'll get Pandora and Spotify. Uh, my tester does not have the navigation function. Uh, it's a separate option if you want the nav system. Um, so, I mean, everything in here is pretty well labeled. I like the fact that VW gives you a tuning or a volume knob and a tuning knob. One thing that kind of annoys me is the fact that this little portion right here, the little power on button, it doesn't actually stay upright. It keeps changing based on whenever you turn it. So that's a little bit annoying design detail. Some of you may may or not may or may not care for that. Uh, it really just depends on you. When you hit the car button here, you can see a little trip computer um, there that shows your distance to empty, your fuel economy information. Uh, coming down here, you can see the six speed on the Golf R is typical Volkswagen stuff. The throws are really nice. Uh, it's a little bit long, but it's a very slick shifter. The clutch is also very light. It has a good amount of feedback We'll go into the test drive later on. Uh, in case you forget you're driving a Golf R, there'll be four motion badges right there. So it'll constantly remember, remind you that. Your USB and your aux port is in there with some decent storage for your phone. Um, and then down here, this is the drive mode selector along with the stability control off switch. When you push this, it cycles between race, uh, individual, or normal, and you can also see it'll show it down here as well. Individual allows you to customize the throttle and the steering depending on however you'd like it. I'm gonna primarily do this car in, in race mode and see how it feels. Uh, you do get an electronic parking brake. I believe that's only on the US models. The European ones have a handbrake, so you can kind of do some J-turns. Um, there's an auto hold function here as well, which is nice. Your cup holders are down here. The armrest is traditional Volkswagen stuff. Um, it actually surprisingly does only slide, but there's no uh, there's no storage here, which is which is interesting. Um, I'm usually they allow this to flip up, but now it only slides forward and back. So they did kind of take that away from the older Volkswagen models. Now the glove compartment here is typical. It's a pretty good size. It's lined with felt. It's damped. Your CD drive is in there for your and also for the infotainment system drive and SD reader in there. And then taking a look at these seats, like I said before, very comfortable. Um, I like the seats a lot. I think they're probably the best in class, even better than the current STI. And then you can see my tester obviously doesn't have a sunroof, but there is a standard size sunroof available if you so desire it. Now, overall, I definitely think this interior is the most luxurious feeling in the cabin, the most spacious feeling, and probably the easiest to live with. And I love the fact that it gives you Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, which is new for 2016. Now looking at the back seat of the Golf R, you can see it also gives you a pretty good amount of space. The floor obviously is not flat, um, but the legroom is pretty plentiful. Now stepping back here, you can see very good uh, foot space underneath the front seats. I love the fact that Volkswagen gives you vents back here. I think it's the only one in the class that does that. And then shutting the door, it sounds solid, uh, and, but surprisingly back here is actually hard touch plastic, but there's more of that fake carbon fiber, the aluminum door handle, and then some leather stitching right there. And then. Looking at the armrest here, there's actually a fold-down armrest, so I like that. Uh, the seats themselves, of course, they fold down 60-40, and they also give you a small little pass-through, it looks like, right there, if you guys need to expand the cargo area, and then some nice uh, cup holders as well. 
Now looking at the cargo area of the Golf R, you can see it's actually the largest in the class. You're looking at around 20 cubic feet of space with the seats up, fold them down you get 50 cu 52 cubic feet of space. So that is significantly larger than what the RS gives you and more than what the trunk on the STI gives you as well. Um, looking underneath the floor here, there is no spare. So um, it probably just comes with a fix-a-flat kit uh, and Volkswagen may or may not offer one from the dealer as an accessory. of the latest Golf R, you're looking at the most potent version of the Volkswagen 2.0-liter TSI four-cylinder. Uh, in this application, it makes 292 horsepower and 280 pound-feet of torque. Now, that is less than what the Focus RS gives you and what the Subaru STI gives you, but keep in mind, those two also have bigger engines. Uh, so this is actually a, the most powerful Golf R that Volkswagen has ever produced. Uh, it all goes through the Haldex all-wheel drive system through either a six-speed manual like my tester, or you can also pony up for the dual clutch transmission. Now, this is the only competitor in the segment that offers an automatic so if you guys need an automatic don't want to drive stick this is the one you want to pick this also happens to get the best gas miles in the segment this one is rated at 25 in the city and 31 on the highway get the dual clutch it drops to like 23 and 30 mpg so much better fuel economy versus its competitors um, you do have to put premium in this car it has like a 14 and a half gallon gas tank the golf r weighs roughly around 3300 pounds but let's get it out on the road and see how it all works together Okay, so this is my first time driving the current Golf R, and I have to say, I'm pretty impressed with the GTI. If you guys remember my review of the old, um, or the, not really the old, the Mark 7 GTI, I was pretty much in love with this car. Now I am a little bit, I'm on a rougher part of the road here, so if you guys are noticing there's a lot of noise, it's because I'm on this gravel road. I mean, hey, I'm in an all-wheel drive pocket rocket, so why not be on a gravel road, right? So, <laughs> first setting foot in the Golf R, you're really gonna notice immediately the refinement that this car gives you. This is a car that you could easily daily drive because the seats are comfortable, it's roomy cabin, the visibility in here is very good, um, and this, the overall feel of this car just feels much higher quality. It feels like you're driving almost kind of like an Audi, which, I mean, let's be honest, Audi makes a their version of this car known as the, the S3. So the Golf R is a pretty nice car to drive on an everyday basis, which is important because this is the most expensive golf you're gonna spend, you're gonna buy. So you expect it to feel like you 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 know got what you pay for in general. Now the steering on the Golf R is actually pretty damn good. The uh, the it's very light effort, but at the same time it gets nice and heavy, especially when I'm going through these curvy roads here. The suspension stays nice and flat. Um, although I do, I will say that the steering is not quite as precise and fast as the RS. The RS, when I would turn the wheel, the whole car would kind of just dart around. Um, and it just kind of felt like you were going, or you were piloting something that was much more race focused, which the Golf R definitely doesn't have that feel. This is a more of a relaxed uh, cruiser. So you're gonna notice that immediately uh, when you set foot in this car. Because this car is all-wheel drive, you're probably expecting that you can do some pretty quick acceleration runs, and you can. One thing I notice immediately with the Golf R is uh, it's quick. I mean, this car with the manual is a little slower than its competitors and the, the and the DSG. This car will get to 60 in roughly 5.3 seconds. But honestly, I'm still having a really good time in this car. The shifter and the clutch uh, have really good feel. The throws are a little longer than I would like, but you can see going around corners. Oh, wow, this is fantastic. Okay, <laughs> I'm enjoying this, guys. This is, ooh, this is good. And you know, it is not as loud as the Focus or the Subaru. You can't really hear it all that much, but I really appreciate that when you're, you know, kind of cruising, because I'm gonna put the, the stability control back into its normal setting. I'm gonna put the mode here into normal setting as well, and just put it into fifth. And you can see here the ride quality, super, super calm. Uh, the seat's comfortable, the noise levels in here. It stays pretty subdued, um, so you could easily daily drive this car and it won't beat you up. And the engine 
it just pulls and pulls and pulls. It doesn't have any turbo lag, surprisingly. Uh, and it pulls all the way hard to its red line, where some of the competitors I've driven, the power tapers off uh, when you get close to red line. This car just keeps wanting to pull, so it's a really refined and just nice feeling car. So I have to say, even as much as I love the RS, I would easily pick this one as my daily driver, because honestly, I'm not gonna go to the track very often. Uh, I'm really gonna prefer something like this. Now, if you guys uh, really wanna use your Golf R as the ultimate daily driver, you can also get this car with the company's adaptive cruise control with automatic emergency braking. Uh, my tester, of course, doesn't have it, so, um, you know, keep in mind if you get it with the dual clutch, it'll basically just drive itself for you. And you have the all-wheel drive grip. You have the, you know, performance, uh, performance stuff. The look of this car is super just subdued, but still very refined, classy, and elegant. I mean, that's the whole, that's the way Volkswagen has pretty much always, always been in the past. Now you're probably wondering how much does the Ultimate Golf cost? Now, uh, a standard Golf, of course, is basically an economy car. It starts at like under eight, under 19,000. The Golf R is roughly twice the price of this. Um, you're gonna be looking at around uh, 35.6 for a Golf R, which is a little bit cheaper than a Focus RS, a little bit cheaper than a, a Subaru STI. Honestly, they're all around the same price. Uh, my tester, because it's a manual, it doesn't have any options, it stickers for just over 36 with Destination, which is honestly not bad. It, if you look at the fact that this car is just the ultimate Golf that offers Audi levels of luxury uh, and refinement, I mean, it, it, it also has a huge trunk and a huge back seat. This is a really practical car. Now, if you guys want to get the DSG, it's gonna cost you like a thousand bucks. If you wanna get the adaptive cruise control, that's gonna cost you more money. Um, but overall, you're going to be you know, getting the most refined, most luxurious, most, you know, fuel efficient offering in the class, which I haven't really had a chance to, I can't really test the fuel economy since I'm at a, a test day where I'm literally just driving these cars on, on a short loop. But um, I wouldn't be surprised if this does get the best gas mileage because it's just a super refined, relaxed feeling car when you pretty much are not trying to drive like a jerk or when you're trying to not get speeding tickets. That's the one thing about the RS is it kind of, you know, encourages you to be naughty. Where this car, you know, you can put it into its sixth gear and just kind of cruise and it's very relaxing and just very comfortable. So if you guys are in the market for a performance uh, hot hatch and you need the most refinement, you need the most comfortable seats, you need the biggest back seat, the biggest trunk, the Golf R is definitely going to fit that sweet spot. But just also keep in mind that if you're planning to take this car to the track often, if you're looking for something that gets more attention, if you're looking for something that just is the most powerful, the quickest, the RS probably may be a better bet. The, the Subaru kind of fits somewhere squarely in the middle. But with all that said, I hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview of this 2016 Volkswagen Golf R. If you're looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, make sure you follow me on Instagram, like us on Facebook, and as always, guys, keep subscribed to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.